where our work is cooperative. So we strive to have a um, non-hierarchical structure within our um, within the workers. We have a board that and um, the, the aim is that everybody who works here is a, a member of the board. As a corporation, uh, we have a board of directors and they are elected annually by our membership. It's a very specialised area now. Uh, you simply just can't ask for volunteers. Uh, you need to have the right skills to run a financial institution. The series board currently has the 11 members. Um, three of those are the co-CEOs of series, if you like. Um, there's a staff representative and then the rest are elected representatives of our membership. And we're both a, a member and community-based organisation but also a business. Well, there are nine directors on the board, um, one of whom is called the independent chair, he's the chairman of the board. Another three are also appointed by, by what we call the government shareholders, leaving five who are appointed by the community shareholders. So a majority of the board is appointed by people who are not involved with government. It's managed by a board of directors and volunteers. Um, it has a company secretary, um, seven directors, site manager uh, and staff on the, on the ground running the day to day. Within the directors there's a uh, site management committee rather than everybody sort of putting the two bob in with so that, that group works closely with the site management. Most of the shareholders are locals, uh, probably 99% of them are locals, I think there's about 680 odd shareholders. The board of directors, mm -hmm. then the executive director, then operations manager, social enterprises just fit into that structure as well. So part of the aim is that all the women that are involved all kind of have some say in how it runs and some conversations around you know how we distribute the money and how much we charge and how much goes to the company and how much is you know a fair wage kind of thing. So it's a bit co-op-y in terms of that stuff. So we don't have a management committee. We are all um, we all make the decisions and we have meetings uh, every week to talk about just normal business matters and then we have board meetings um, once a month. But we're not. Uh, like a consumer cooperative. The board is very involved um, with all of our strategic decisions and financial decisions. We have weekly staff meetings where all of the students and um, trainees and apprentices get to have a say in you know, things that they think need improving or things that they're not happy about. So we've got a, sort of three levels, I guess, of decision making. It depends what the credit union is doing. Um, we sometimes call focus groups uh, in the community. Uh, also, we'll have board advisory groups. So if we don't believe we have the skills, we will set up an advisory group. And we did that up with our recent building renovation. We had an advisory building committee. Uh, we needed architectural and building design skills. And we sourced those individuals uh, to join that committee. The community as a whole gets involved only in the sense through the, the directors who are appointed by the, the state and the council and community shareholders. It, it is possible for a tenant to be a director. We don't currently have one of our tenants as a director. Generally speaking, the influence we give our tenants is by, ver by means of consultation. There are lots of decision-making processes at series, and so it depends which layer you're talking about. Um, the series board, for example, is made up um, in the majority of the board are members, elect, members elected by the membership, um, and so they, there's an influence at that layer through a representative system. And, and I guess that comes back into our structure, team, being a team is really, really important. Um, the staff meetings, team meetings every week, so that's where staff get involved, that's where they get the big picture vision, that's where they can um, come up with ideas, they can better and grow services that they provide, you know, well this is not quite meeting here, what can we do about it, and that happens constantly. One of our objects, I think it's probably even the third object in our charter, is that we should be a public benevolent institution. Now that's the highest level of charitable status that you can have, and it means that you really exist only to help relief of poverty, the people in in, in really dire circumstances. Now the difficulty is that a lot, a lot of people are short of affordable rental housing and they're not all in poverty. We want to help 
quite a lot of people. Ensuring that um, particularly the big five social enterprises are able to produce sufficient um, surplus to run the series whilst at the same time operating consistently with our values. So say for example the cafe, um, the profit isn't, or the surplus isn't as high as we'd like it to be, um, but yet we require that the cafe operate, you know, by paying proper wages to staff, by um, using only organic produce, which is a higher, you know, cost of goods. So we constrain our operations through our values, yet we expect the business return. So if you were going to really make a profit from the cafe, you probably wouldn't, you know, do either of those things necessarily. The other thing that perhaps comes up is like speaking with a united voice on behalf on, uh, on behalf of the town. Politically, our shareholders run the whole range, um, so we need to be quite careful about when we might speak up against something the local government's doing, the shire, the local shire's doing. Um, there's always going to be those who agree with what they're doing and those who don't. I think in the past we did, yes, very much, because we would get ideas and they would shoot off, and then it got to the point where, well, hold on, what is the mission? What was the mission when we started? Is that the mission now? Yeah. So that was about two and a half years, three yeah. years ago, the board started asking some questions. Are we going to do a good job or are we just stretching ourselves just to get money? Um, no, that, not, that doesn't drive us. We do a mail order service to schools all over Queensland. And so teachers should really be trying to salvage materials from, from their own local area, but instead we're you know, using um, petrol miles and things like that to, to ship essentially rubbish all over the state rather than um, yeah getting people to, to look at in their own local community for the, those kind of resources. So, I mean that's just one. Yeah. I've realised I think video bags will lose its charm and what it is if we get too big so we actually have to stay small to, to really live our mission out to a degree. That I have to stay in relationship with all of these women for this to be genuine. If someone was to call and say, we want to make a massive order of you know this much stuff, it could seem like a good opportunity, but the pressure and stress that would put on the women to produce a lot of stuff in a short amount of time would potentially, could even make some of them sick. So I'm always cautious of, um, like success is a good thing in terms of selling lots of stuff, but at the same time, in the in terms of what we're doing, it has to be measured for the lady's sake, so that it remains enjoyable and it doesn't become this pressure pressure. And at one point, we decided we had to create non-charitable subsidiaries to make sure that we were still quarantining the non-charitable things in a way that meant the charitable goals were not. Uh, being compromised. Customer service is, in a commercial sense, something that involves people having a lot of confidence and um, being very extroverted and outgoing and being able to sell things. Um, a lot of our trainees and staff have very low confidence, uh, not very extroverted and quite shy when it comes to speaking to people they don't know. Our social mission is to support them to slowly develop their confidence. Um, and to not push them out of their comfort zone. <laughs> um, in a business sense, that makes it more challenging for us to actually sell. Um, but that's okay, you know, that's part of the challenge that we face.